the last lecture we have seen one particular way of dealing with uh, uh, a flow domain which does not fit into the usual coordinate system that we, uh, that we normally uh, adopt for example, the Cartesian or cylindrical and all that and if you have a flow domain which it is a combination of these for example, a pipe inside a rectangular duct then we cannot make use of this and uh, in the last lecture we have seen an approach whereby we come up with a, a new coordinate lines which uh, distort and wrap around the bodies of, uh, uh, of interest so as to define the uh, flow domain in a uh, structured coordinate frame uh, psi eta zeta instead of x y z and uh, we solve the equations we transform the equations from the physical plane into the computational plane and uh, we map the physical plane into the computational plane and then uh, we do all the computations that is uh, the discretization solution and all that in uh, the computation plane and then map the solution back into the physical plane. So, this body fitted uh, uh, approach is one way of dealing with complicated geometry and it has proved very successful and it retains the characteristics of a structured mesh approach to the solution of uh, the governing equations. Now, in uh, uh, this lecture we will see an alternative viewpoint an alternative approach it is based on the finite volume method. Essentially what we are saying is that we want to solve our uh, uh, governing partial differential equation to get the solution of uh, 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 the, the flow variable at several points within the flow domain that is a basic CFD approach and these partial differential equations represent uh, the uh, conservation in terms of uh, the rate of increase of that particular property in a control volume uh, as being balanced by uh, three causes one is the convective flux the other is the diffusive flux and the third one is the source or the sink term or the source and the sink term in the case uh, for example of the turbulent kinetic energy where we saw that there is a production term associated with the large eddies, large eddies and then there is a sink term associated with the, uh, with the very small eddies and together they determine the overall level of, uh, 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 of the particular quantity which is being conserved which is the turbulent kinetic energy in this case at that particular uh, grid point in that particular control volume. So, we can rewrite our standard conservation equation. which uh, we have written many times as in this way this is the convective flux is equal to the diffusive flux plus the source term. So, this particular equation uh, uh, can be rewritten in, uh, uh, in this way by bringing the fluxes together of rho u j phi minus gamma phi d phi by d x j equal to s phi. So, this is the convective flux and this is the diffusive flux. Of the particular quantity phi and in turbulent flow we have seen that this particular term will dominate and this diffusivity here is not that of molecular diffusivity, but of uh, uh, turbulent diffusivity, but generally this is the form here and which can be written realizing that this is a, a vector uh, a, a divergence uh, operator here we can write this as plus del dot uh, for example, f equal to s phi where f is the total flux we can put f phi here 
where f i is f i convective plus f i diffusive and the convective flux is given by rho u j f i and the diffusive flux is given by rho phi uh, like this. So, this is a this is a governing equation which is valid at, at every point. In the finite volume method we put the equation in this in this uh, form and uh, we take a control volume and then we integrate this over the control volume dou by dou t of rho phi d v plus integral of del dot f phi d v equal to s phi d v. So, for every control volume that is for we construct a volume around each grid point at which we want to uh, uh, evaluate the variable. So, we can say that this is integrated over a control volume and the control volume is obviously a closed surface. This is a control volume with the different sides and making up together is the total volume contained in this and it has a closed surface and taking advantage of that we can using Gauss's law we can convert this volume integral into a surface integral and we can write this as dou by dou t of rho phi plus integral over the control surface the closed control surface of n where n is a uh, normal vector associated with the uh, surface uh, enveloping the control volume equal to s phi d v where this is the source term here. So, this is a, a, a rewriting of the governing equation in what can be called as a conservation form. And the conservation form refers to the fluxes that are appearing here the convective flux and the diffusive flux. Uh, okay. The conservation form refers to these terms that are appearing here uh, being interpreted as the convective flux and diffusive flux and therefore, associating these with the, with the fluxes that are passing through the phases of the control volume uh, which make up which make up the uh, overall volume of that. Okay. So, giving us the meaning the interpretation for these two terms as uh, the convective and diffusive fluxes and evaluating these things over the uh, uh, surface enveloping the control volume is what we call as the conservation form. And uh, uh, for example, the alternative view is that you have rho u j phi and uh, even if you take rho to be constant we know that u is not constant and we can write this equivalently as rho u j dou phi by dou x j plus phi dou by dou x j of rho u j. And uh, uh, so, these two are mathematically equivalent and similarly we can write this as uh, gamma phi dou square phi by dou x j square plus uh, dou phi by dou x j times dou gamma phi by dou x j. So, we can split it up into that and when we do that then we lose the interpretation of this term as the flux. Essentially what we are saying is that the, the, the quantity phi for which we are writing a conservation equation it will the value of this within this control volume will change that is what this term is this term will be non-zero either because we have a source term which is spread throughout the control volume or because we have some uh, flux which is coming into the control volume by diffusive action by the fact that the value of the point uh, of the variable in this control volume is less or more than the value of the control volume in the neighboring cells or by the fact there is a flow 
because of the flow and because the flow brings in all the fluid properties and phi is one of the fluid properties like enthalpy or temperature or concentration. So, the value of the phi within this control volume may change because it is being brought in and taken out along with the flow or because it is being diffused by gradients that exist between at, at this particular uh, uh, point at this particular cell uh, across the things. So, these are the mechanisms by which uh, the phi can change and that is what is being represented in this interpretation. Now, when we write it in this interpretation it becomes easy for us to apply this statement of the conservation of the conservation law here to an arbitrary control volume not necessarily something that has four phases in two dimensions or six phases in two dimensions. We can even take a triangular control volume and then we can say that this this uh, uh, and we can uh, uh, for example, if you say that this is a b c here, we can say that dou by dou t of rho phi, let us say that uh, uh, this is the ith cell with three triangular faces rho, rho phi i plus we can uh, associate with this the control surface three phases a b b c c a and over each of this we can write. So, we can say that n dot f phi d s over a b plus n dot f phi times d s over side b c plus n dot f phi d s over side c a that is the integral of all the fluxes that are coming through the phases and there are three phases here is equal to s phi times d v. We have a d v here. So, in this particular case the volume we are looking at a two dimensional thing we can make it into uh, a three dimension by considering unit length in the uh, in the other direction. So, we need to know what the volume of this element is. So, that is we need to know the area of this triangle multiplied by the unit distance. So, this is given by the cell geometry and in evaluating this term this is also given by the cell geometry and orientation. And similarly these things and here we have again cell geometry. And what we need in order to uh, apply this convert this equation into uh, uh, a mathematical equation is obviously we have d rho phi by dt times volume. So, for a given cell we know this delta volume and for a given cell with control phases we know each of the uh, uh, areas of each of the side a b b c and c a. So, when we talk about the area of uh, the side for example, b c we are talking about the area of this surface with this side as b c and this delta z direction as unity as uh, the length here. Okay. So, that is how we get a surface uh, and an area and this surface has an outward normal vector n which is what is coming here. So, in order to apply this equation we need to evaluate the fluxes. So, the the flux term f b has to be evaluated. So, that means that flux coming from the convective and flux coming from diffusive contributions will have to be evaluated at each phase and that convective flux and diffusive flux has a, a particular mathematical form 
rho u j phi and then uh, uh, the diffusive flux and it is this is where we need information of the values of the uh, of phi in the neighboring cells. So, using those values and using the definition of uh, these fluxes here, we can come up with uh, uh, the evaluation of these terms in terms of the neighboring cell values. And once we put this here, we will have an overall equation for uh, uh, for this particular uh, cell. So, that cell will then be in the form of uh, 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 and at that point we can write uh, dou phi by dou t as rho phi i n plus 1 minus rho phi i n minus 1 by delta t times delta volume is this and the fluxes will have a, a contribution associated with velocity and the value of the phi here and that is value of the phi at uh, for example, at this point. Uh, that is the cell uh, uh, centroid here, the plane, uh, the surface centroid, and that has to be evaluated from uh, uh, in by some means. Okay, so we can say that this plus net convective plus diffusive flux over all uh, uh, surfaces enveloping surfaces is equal to the S phi at i times delta volume. So, this is the discretized equation in which one can see that phi i uh, uh, n is coming phi n plus 1 is coming and obviously, in the diffusive fluxes we have to evaluate the gradient dou phi by dou x and that means that phi i plus 1 minus phi i minus 1 by 2 delta x is one possible form. So, that is where we are going to link the value of uh, the current uh, uh, cell value to the neighboring cell values. So, in this way we can take uh, a governing equation we can divide our flow domain into uh, cells small cells and over each cell we can uh, uh, discretize the conservation equation written in conservation form that is the variation within the cell as a result of volumetric forces and the uh, fluxes here. And uh, it is in, in this form we can apply this to a particular cell and then convert this differential equation into an algebraic equation. Now, uh, there are uh, when we talk about the corresponding momentum equation here, we have to make a distinction between sources here that are truly volumetric and those are in a way uh, uh, coming through the surface. So, when if when you treat the volumetric source as a uh, as a volume and then uh, uh, as a volumetric source term and uh, any source term which is coming uh, which is acting on the control faces as as appropriately uh, as uh, the face related uh, uh, source term then we have a strong conservation form. I would like to say that in uh, the momentum equation the source term here is for example, minus dou p by dou x. Uh, is uh, uh, something is one of the source terms and so we can say that minus dou p by dou x times the volume delta v is the momentum source that is coming from the pressure, but we know that pressure is a surface force. So, this should be actually evaluated as uh, uh, as the as something like a, a equivalent to a pressure uh, acting on the surface of the control volume and then that would make it uh, uh, what is known as strong conservation form. Again we have uh, if we have radiation as a source radiation source term is uh, uh, typically associated with, with radiative flux. We can 
So, this is a also a flux term this should be coming uh, through the surfaces not as a volumetric source term, but if you were to evaluate this as, as a volumetric source term then it is not uh, uh, in the strong conservation form. So, in the evaluation of source terms we should uh, try to make a distinction between those sources that are coming through acting through the phases like the pressure and the radiative flux and those that are truly volumetric source terms like a gravitational force term is a volumetric or a, a, a is a source term which is acting throughout the material which is there in the in the volume. If you have for example, for the energy uh, equation if you have a heat generation term which is spread throughout the control volume then it has to be treated as a volumetric source term but energy flux coming through the phases in the form of radiative heat flux must be treated in, in this. So, we have to treat each term appropriately as either acting through the phases of the control volume or having uh, or being uh, spread out through the throughout the domain and therefore, constituting a volumetric source term. So, once we do that then we can claim to have a strong conservation form and the conservation equation that is uh, uh, being uh, put out here uh, that is being solved exactly at each control volume and that is one of the strong point of, uh, of the finite volume method. Uh, the conservation that is incorporated in this equation is being enforced in each control volume by interpreting this as a conservation equation in this conservation form. Uh, and so, if the flux terms are evaluated properly then there is no possibility of generating uh, spurious mass sources or flux sources or uh, sources of this and that is one of the advantages of this. And uh, uh, when you have uh, discontinuities in the, in the uh, within the flow domain as may be arising from uh, uh, shocks and those kind of things evaluating in this conservation form is supposed to give superior results than putting it in the general form like this. So, uh, uh, that uh, enforcement of the conservation in each each uh, discrete cell is a characteristic feature of this and written in this way this can be applied to an arbitrary control volume with uh, uh, a defined volume and a defined uh, uh, phases which envelop and completely close the uh, cell. Okay. So, this is the basic idea we will we'll try to see this in action through a simple example before we go on to the formal evaluation of uh, these fluxes and then look at some more complexities. So, the case that we are looking at the simple example that we are looking at is flow through fully developed flow fully developed laminar steady flow through a triangular duct through a duct of triangular cross section. Why did we take uh, this particular example? Because this is uh, one can see that at once straight away it is uh, uh, difficult to get an analytical solution. If it is a circular pipe we can do and if it is a rectangular pipe maybe with more difficulty we can do, but if it is an arbitrarily shaped uh, triangular duct then uh, to get the velocity field is not uh, 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 a trivial uh, thing analytically and uh, um, also to apply this to for example, to fit a, a structured grid for this is again not uh, 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 an easy task and definitely we will have uh, large distortions of the cells around these corner points. So, if you were applying the body fitted grid approach for this then one can expect more difficulty with the numerical solution and that is also one reason why this particular example is a suitable example to illustrate the benefits uh, uh, and the advantages of the finite volume method. So, in when we take uh, this particular uh, uh, cross section we obviously need to have uh, the governing equation and the governing equation is the one dimensional uh, momentum equation 
through the z direction. So, uh, and it is uh, since the flow is steady and fully developed, uh, it takes the form of dou square w, where w is the velocity uh, through this duct. So, this is the duct, and velocity w is in this direction, and x and y are within the plane of this plus dou square w by dou y square times mu is equal to minus 1 by rho dou p by dou z and dou p by dou z is a constant for the case of fully developed flow and it is a given constant from the fact that you can specify the boundary condition at z equal to 0 and z equal to l because uh, you have a uh, pressure gradient as constant we can evaluate this. So, this is a given constant. So, for this particular case we can uh, uh, look uh, we can see how we can apply the uh, finite volume method uh, for evaluation of this and we can see how we are going to tackle this and evaluate each of the fluxes through this example. So, here we have uh, the case of fully developed laminar flow in a triangular duct of irregular cross section. When we say irregular cross section the three sides are not the same length. So, it is not a, an equilateral triangle to make it slightly more complicated and the governing equation for this is obviously dou square w by dou x square plus dou square w by dou y square equal to 1 by mu dou p by dou z and uh, we are considering constant properties and since it is fully developed and steady this right hand side is a constant we are calling it as c and uh, the boundary conditions are because we have three walls here uh, the velocity w is, is 0 on all the walls. So, that is the boundary condition. So, the problem statement is uh, uh, very straightforward, but analytical solution is not available for an arbitrary triangle we have analytical solutions for equilateral triangles which are given in uh, stand books but we can use this readily using uh, uh, the finite volume method. So, as a precursor we write the governing equation in conservation form. So, what we have here as uh, this term we recognize that this is the diffusion term and therefore, it is a divergence term. So, we put this in the divergence form. So, that part associated with uh, uh, the left hand side here is expressed as a divergence that is del dot gradient of w is equal to c and this divergence form when integrated will give us uh, uh, we can convert this into uh, the area integral surface integral. So, we divide the domain this triangular domain into a combination of triangles and rectangles and that is the advantage of finite volume method it is not necessary that the uh, domain has only rectangles or only triangles it can be a combination of all these things and that makes it an unstructured mesh and we are cheating a, a bit here. Uh, um, we are taking uh, for example, the uh, we are dividing this into cells like this a combination of uh, uh, rectangular cells and triangular cells and we are saying that we want to have the value of the w at at these points these are obviously the center centroids of uh, these rectangles and we are for the sake of simplicity we are saying that we want to have the velocity at this point at these points here and we know that these points are on the wall therefore the velocity there is zero okay uh, as we make it uh, more and more uh, um, as we introduce more and more number of points that approximation will become less and we can also become more sophisticated and put this point to be at the centroid of this triangle, but for the time being we will say that this is where we want to have the velocities. So, the problem reduces to finding the velocities at these 4 points plus 6 points each of which has a control volume or uh, an area which is uh, unequal here. And so, we the governing equation is now integrated over the control volume and is converted into a surface integral using Gauss's divergence theorem. So, that is del dot gradient of w dv 
integration over the control volume closed volume is equal to n dot gradient of w this is that uh, diffusive flux of momentum in this particular case over the control surface and that is equal to the constant right hand side times this uh, uh, integrated over the same volume. So, if we can apply this to each cell in this way. So, that is integral over the control surface is equal to this n is a uh, is an outward normal vector for this case of two dimensional case it has two components i direction s x in the i direction s y in the j direction and the gradient of velocity also has two components dou w by dou x in the i direction and dou w by dou y in the j direction. So, the dot product of these two times the constant c times the volume of that control uh, uh, volume is the discretized form of this equation. So, each cell gives an algebraic equation linking the cell value that is w i we can see uh, obviously, the uh, w i coming from the gradients here with those of the neighboring cells. So, uh, we are looking now at the practicalities of the, uh, of the, uh, of the domain and uh, here we are looking at 20 nodes uh, we are breaking up into the left hand side of this triangle into uh, uh, 4 equal parts here and then 4 equal parts in this uh, thing and based on that we can do uh, decomposition of this into a combination of triangular and rectangular uh, uh, tiles and again the right hand side of this is also made into 4 uh, divisions in the uh, horizontal and 4 divisions in the vertical. So, we have a total of 20 points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 all the way like this out of which some points 1, 9, 15 and all those things lie on the boundary. So, out of the 20 points 8 are boundary points with 0 velocity the velocity is already known and we need to find the velocity at uh, the other 12 uh, points. So, that we can evaluate and having found the velocity at each point we can multiply for example, the velocity at uh, 16 by the area of uh, the cell this cell to get the flow rate through this we take uh, this velocity times this area will give you the flow rate through this velocity at 17 times this area will give you the flow rate through this and then we can compute the overall flow rate in that way. And uh, so that we can get the flow rate for a given pressure gradient so that is how the problem is posed and in each case we need to uh, find out the uh, delta the sides of these faces. So, we have delta x so, we are taking for whatever reason in this example this length to be 0 0.01375 and this length to be 0 0.02625. So, this is broken up into 4 so that you have a delta x here and this is again broken up into 4 and this whole height is taken as 0 0.01452. So, that is broken up into 4. So, using these things for any cell here rectangular or triangular we know the sides and that is the geometric information that we have and once we know the sides for each of these we can find out the length of each side uh, which constitute the surface and the area of each cell which in three dimensions would be the volume. So, the geometrical information is obtained from the discretization from the breaking up of the entire flow domain into tiles rectangular tiles and rectangular and uh, triangular uh, 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 tiles. So, we need to find out velocity at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then again 10, 11, 12, 13 and then 16 and 17. So, there are 12 unknowns and over each of these uh, points we have a control volume which is defined here and for each cell we apply this discretized form in order to derive an equation. So, that is shown for cell 2 here. So, that this is cell 2 with uh, uh, which is a rectangular face and here we have w 2 and immediately to the right at the center of uh, the adjacent cell we have w 3 and the bottom wall this bottom face here is a is a wall and left side we have this as a, a part of the wall here and it has a w 
1 of 0 and above this above this again you have uh, 0 here. So, when you look at the 4 uh, neighboring points here on this side you have 3 w 3 which is to be determined on the left hand side we have w 1 at a certain distance which can be evaluated and that is 0. Above this you have w 9 at a certain distance which is 0 and below this you have a wall. So, you do not have a, a, a point here. So, we can say that the gradient dotted with the uh, uh, area of each side is equal to the uh, c by mu times the total volume of each cell ok. So, that is what we have volume of. So, we can say that all the uh, cell to surface integral of this over the cell to surface is equal to c by mu times volume of cell 2. So, this particular uh, thing we are putting it as a b i h and so the integral of this over a b i h. So, that is gradient of w times d a over a b plus gradient of w times dotted with d a over b i plus gradient times uh, uh, d a over i h and gradient times this over uh, h a is equal to this. And we take adv we take note of the fact uh, that these are oriented in x and y uh, directions the outward noun vectors are located in the x and y directions and this one on this space the outward normal vector for this is located in the positive x direction and here is located in the negative x direction. Therefore, gradient of w dotted with d a on a b is uh, in the negative x direction. So, we have minus dou w by dou y dotted with the area of this cell. So, this is delta x and in the z direction we have delta z and over b i this is the gradient at this point. So, that is dou w by dou x component here and the area of this cell is delta y times delta z which is in the other direction and here it is the gradient in the y direction at this point times the area of this cell which is delta x delta z and uh, uh, here we have a minus because the outward normal vector is in the negative x direction. So, we have dou, dou w by dou x which is the gradient in the x direction times the area which is delta y delta z and this equal to this. So, now in this equation we know delta x and delta z for this particular cell and we need to evaluate the gradients at each of these points. Now, when we come to this particular point minus dou w by dou y at a b. So, we take the center here we know that this value is 0 from the boundary condition and this value is w 2. So, we can say that is w 2 minus 0 divided by this distance which is delta y by 2. So, that is the estimate of the gradient that is coming here. When you come to this point here the gradient d w by d x can be evaluated as w 3 minus w 2 divided by this distance. So, w 3 minus w 2 divided by delta x uh, is the total thing and here again we have this point and this point. So, w uh, 9 minus w 2 divided by this height which is delta y w 9 is 0. So, we can uh, make use of this and here it is w 2 minus w uh, 1 divided by delta x. So, we are substituting we are making estimates for the fluxes at each of the faces. In this case we are looking at the diffusive flux and we can uh, substitute like this and wherever we know the value zeros here we can substitute and then we can rewrite this and then we can finally, get an expression an algebraic uh, equation involving w 2 and w 3 because this side and this side this side the velocities are known. So, we have an algebraic equation by applying the conservation equation for this particular cell and we can do the same thing for each of the uh, other cells. For example, if you consider this cell here you would have the gradient to be evaluated here, here and here and here. So, this gradient will be in terms of w 10 minus w 3 this gradient will be w 4 minus w 2 3 this gradient will be w 3 minus w 2 and this gradient is w 3 minus 0 divided by this half distance. So, in that way we can uh, uh, evaluate for each of these and then we can come up with uh, uh, with set of 12 algebraic equations for the 12 uh, uh, faces for the 12 control volumes uh, or tiles and they are in uh, expressed 
as linear algebraic equations involving the grid information which is coming in the form of delta x, delta y, delta z uh, that is here like this. And so you have 12 simultaneous linear algebraic equations and you can put them in the matrix form and you can see that you have this central diagonal and uh, some adjacent diagonal. There are some uh, things that are coming here, but there are also some other things that are coming here. So, it is not necessary that because of the of the way that the numbering of the cells is made, it is no longer possible to have the kind of structured diagonals that we have in the case of a structured grid. Because uh, the neighbor if you look at uh, 11 uh, for this point here is 10 and 12 in this direction it is ok, but here it is 16 and 4 it is not i j plus 1 and j minus 1. So, that kind of nomenclature is not possible. So, that is why we do not exactly have a structured matrix, but it is a still a sparse matrix and still we have a linear algebraic equation of the form a w equal to b and this we can solve using uh, uh, gauss seidel method provided that this satisfies the uh, Scarborough criterion diagonal dominance condition and it does satisfy the diagonal dominance condition even in the case of this unstructured grid. And then you can get a, a solution at all these intermediate points from which you can draw the contours. So, after solving this using gauss seidel method we can get a velocity field like this. If you want more accuracy we can divide this into more number of points and here it is divided into something like uh, 72 points here and you have each of them is smaller and you get more points and then we can uh, uh, get an equation and here this is an evaluation with uh, each uh, horizontal uh, division into 8 by 4 more number of cells 32 64 like this and the mean velocity that is computed here and the Reynolds number that is computed here and the size of the matrix. As you go to larger and larger matrices larger larger sizes we can see that the computed velocity is becoming constant and the Reynolds number is also becoming constant. So, we are looking here at a solution for the mean velocity for a given pressure gradient which uh, uh, which seems to be ok and which is obtained using a combination of rectangular and triangular cells not using a structured mesh, but using the control volume approach in which we take the discretized uh, the governing equation conservation form and then convert it into evaluation of the surface fluxes and volume source terms. So, what we have selected here is a, uh, is a very simple example because uh, we have uh, seen the case where the flow is uh, fully developed and uh, that means that some of the significant components of the fluxes do not appear. If you look at our governing equation here, we only have the diffusive flux coming on the left hand side and here is a source term. So, we do not have the convective fluxes and uh, that is that makes a, a, a gross simplification or trivialization of the problem as we have seen here. That is appropriate for an example, but in, in reality we have to consider uh, the uh, convective fluxes, the fluxes that uh, uh, flux of a particular component coming uh, uh, associated with the flow. And that usually means that uh, uh, that is a difficult more uh, difficult thing to do, because uh, the value of that depends on the upstream values, it does not depend on the local values. A diffusive flux depends only on the local values. and uh, uh, a convective flux depends on the velocity direction and that provides a bit of a challenge when we deal with uh, uh, that in, in the context of finite volume method. So, what we will do next is to take the general case, the take the general case of a conservation equation which not only has the diffusion and source terms as we have considered in this example, but also the temporal and the uh, convective terms into that and we can see how we can put the whole thing together in the form of a solution procedure, which will be uh, uh, applicable to the general case. The, that, that is uh, uh, it is important to be able to see how we can put together the whole process of uh, evaluating the fluxes and uh, the uh, areas and uh, the volumes. 
And uh, once we have a good understanding, we can see that the overall method is uh, it's a very flexible method. It leaves us with the choice of uh, 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 of uh, defining the uh, cells or the tiles which make up the control volume. So it gives it offers us a, a great deal of flexibility in terms of uh, refinement of grid and uh, uh, refinement of a local zone for improved accuracy and uh, th those kind of things can be more readily done in a uh, in a finite volume method than in the case of a uh, uh, structured method. But we will also see that uh, uh, the evaluation of the uh, convective fluxes puts uh, uh, makes it more difficult to incorporate higher order uh, schemes for the uh, for the first order derivatives. And that is one of the uh, difficulties associated with uh, a finite volume method. So there are definitely advantages and there are also disadvantages uh, with the finite volume method just as we have them with the structured uh, uh, mesh in the body fitted coordinate system. But comparing the two I think uh, uh, one would say that finite volume method is uh, uh, more user friendly more uh, uh, easily uh, adaptable method more adaptable than the uh, body fitted grid approach. But a body fitted grid approach is more powerful in terms of uh, uh, a systematic exploitation and uh, the full scale implementation of a, uh, of a high degree schemes compact schemes uh, uh, higher compact higher order schemes is not so trivial in the case of finite volume method. So if you are looking at uh, highly accurate solutions probably the structured grid approach is better. But if you are looking at uh, uh, user friendliness and in terms of being able to tackle complex geometry without too much of uh, difficulty uh, then I think uh, the finite volume method is, uh, is preferable. We still have to do a lot of work before we can say that we know how to use these methods for the, uh, for the uh, general case of a three dimensional flow. So that will be the subject of the next uh, couple of lectures.